Hi, welcome to our instructional video on how to draw shear and MoMA diagrams by the graphical method. We're going to use the same beams we used for the methods by equation, but we're going to see that the graphical method is a faster way to draw shear and MoMA diagrams. It's not always as accurate in that your parabolic curves might not be perfect because you don't have values at every point, but what you get from the graphical method is a fast way to get the basic shape of the shear and MoMA diagram and definitely identify your maximum values, which a lot of times is the most important part when we're designing a member. So to do our graphical method, one of the things that we have to do is we have to pay attention to some mathematical relationships that exist between the load, the shear, and the moment diagram. So let's look at those. All right, so concisely what we can say is that if we wanted to know the shear at any point x, we can just integrate the load or the negative of the load where omega or w, uh, both terms are used, represents the load. And so Conversely then, obviously the derivative of the shear would then just be equal to the negative of the load. And by the same token, we can say that if we want to know the moment at some point x, we can just integrate the shear um, from zero to that point x, and if we need to know the slope of the moment diagram, then that's just equal to the shear. And that's all great, but what on earth does that all really mean? So let's look at that a little bit and let's start with the shear. So I'm going to So let's put down some words that sort of explain that a little bit better. What we're really saying is that if we want to know the magnitude of the shear at some point x and I went ahead and labeled an x distance starting at the pin, just a zero reference. Basically, it's just equal to the area under the load diagram. So if I know the equation of the curve the load, I can just integrate that, or really, if it's a rectangle like that 100 pounds per lineal foot, I can just find the area of the height times the width. Now, the deal is, though, if you have a point load like our 317 pounds or 183 pounds, that doesn't really have an area under it. But what those do is they cause a jump just equal to their magnitude on the shear diagram. And so you can just sum up all the areas and all of the jumps from 0 to x, and that gives you the magnitude of shear at that point. Say we had determined the shear at 0 feet and again at 5 feet using this area method, we'd want to know how to connect those lines, and so then we want to look at the actual value of the load. Is the load constant? Then I'm going to have a constant slope. If the load's increasing or decreasing, I'd have an increasing or decreasing curving slope, parabolic. And so we're just using the magnitude to get that slope. Now the same thing basically holds true for moment and we can look at the moment to shear relationship. So now once we have our shear diagram drawn, we can actually just look for the areas under the shear diagram to give us the magnitude of the moment at any point x and that's great. But by the same token, if you have an applied moment, that doesn't have an area under it either and that's going to cause a jump on the moment diagram. So if you want the moment at any point x, you just sum up all the areas under the shear diagram to that point plus any applied moments in that range of x. And to get the slope, you simply look at the shear. If the shear is constant, like from 5 to 15 feet, you're going to have a constant slope, so like a linear slope on your moment diagram. If your shear is increasing or decreasing, then you're going to have a parabolic like we see from 0 to 5 feet. And we're going to do all this in detail a little bit later in the video. The final thing we need to establish to use these graphical methods is a sign convention. So let's look at that. So we follow the same sign convention that we learned for looking at uh, internal forces on the end of a beam. And so if we are on the left side, so if we start drawing our diagram at the pin at where I've drawn x equal to zero, any shears that are going up are considered positive, any forces going up are positive, and a moment going clockwise is considered positive. If we were to start drawing our shear and moment diagram from the right end of our beam where we have the roller, then any shears that are going down would be drawn po uh, positive, and any moments going counterclockwise would be drawn positive. The nice thing is if you stick to this convention, it doesn't matter whether you draw from the left or the right side, your shear and moment diagrams should look identical. 
So we want to draw this now using the graphical method, and so let's set up our page to get started. So it really helps to go ahead and put a blank shear and moment diagram under your free body diagram and bring down those points of interest like the end of the 100 pound load or where the applied moments are at, all those discontinuities because we know those are going to cause changes in our shear and moment diagram. So let get th let's get things lined up neatly. We're going to draw our shear diagram from the left side, so I've put up the positive sign convention for that. We're going to start with the shear diagram, so I've also put up the mathematical equations for how we're going to get started. And if we're starting the left side, then the very first thing we have is our 317 pounds. So what are we going to do with that? Well, we said point loads cause a jump, so we're going to have a jump, and we're going to jump up because we said that positive shear is upwards or a positive arrow is upwards. Now that negative sign can be a little bit confusing on the mathematical relationship, but look, if we start from the left side, here you go. If the arrows are pointing upward, your shear goes up. If the arrows are pointing down, your shear decreases. It's just that easy. So you can just use that rule if you're starting on the left side. And we're not going to subtract out 100 pounds from the 100 pounds per lineal foot because remember that's per lineal foot. We've only gone zero feet, so we don't get to 100 till we've gone one full foot. So it is 317 straight up. Now we want to look at what's then happening in the easy as we move along the beam. And the easiest way to do this is again looking at discontinuities in the load, like we did for the equation method. So we have a continuous load from zero to five feet that we can find the area under. So let's look at what that would look like. So we said the shear is just summing up all of the load effects. So from 0 to 5 feet, we have 100 times 5. That's our area, or 500, but that's going down. It's negative. So if we sum our loads, we're going to have 317 minus 500, and that's simply going to give us a negative 183 pounds um, at 5 feet. And now we have to figure out how do we get from 0 to that I'm sorry, or from the 317 down to the negative 183. Is it a straight line, a curved line? Well, let's look at our load. Our load is constant. What does that mean? Well, according to our mathematical relationship, if our load is constant, it means our slope is constant, which would be a straight line. So now we have a straight line down to the negative 183. The final thing we want to look at in this 0 to 5 feet is the fact that we now have a shear of 0. We crossed 0 along the way, and we know when the shear is 0, that means we have a maximum on our moment diagram. So let's go ahead and figure out what that x value is, um, because getting that triangular shape that's positive up there from 0 to where we cross 0 is important to us, and we need that x distance. All right, so what's that going to look like? Well, we're decreasing by 100 pounds per every foot we go over, so we can just write the expression 317 minus 100 times x, set that equal to 0, solve for our x value, and that turns out to be 3.17 feet. And so we'll be able to use that later on when we're finding our max moment and drawing our moment diagram. All right, so let's look at the rest of this beam. As we move now from five feet towards the beam ends, we don't have any additional applied forces, which would affect our shear diagram. We have the applied moment, but it does not cause a jump on the shear diagram. It affected our support reactions, and so its effect is included there, but we don't see a jump on our shear diagram, so we can go all the way over to 15 feet. And what do you see in the load from five to 15 feet? Well, hopefully you said you see nothing. So basically the load is zero, so the shear has no change, and the zero is constant, so the slope is constant. So we head right over to 15 feet. And then finally at 15 feet, we do have a point load from the support reaction. We know that causes a jump. It will cause an upward jump, which takes us then back to zero, and we have drawn our shear diagram for this beam. A lot faster than writing equations. So now 
we want to use this shear diagram to get us to our moment diagram. And let's look again at the equations that help us relate shear and moment. We know that the moment is simply equal to the integral of the shear or the area under the shear diagram. And as I look at that shear diagram, well, basically, I see a positive triangle, a negative triangle, and a big old negative rectangle. And I can find the areas of triangles and rectangles. So that first rectangle is from 0 to 3.17 feet. And let's look at some of the attributes of that rectangle. Excuse me, I mean triangle from 0 to 3.17 feet. Let's look at the attributes of the triangle. So it is positive, and since we're just summing up areas, that means we're adding to our moment, so it's going to create positive moment. And the magnitude, though, of the shear is decreasing. We start at 317, and we end up at 0 for the magnitude of the shear, so that means our shear is decreasing. So what does that tell you about our slope? We'll get back to that. All right, but let's look at that area. So we can literally call that area 1 and highlight that, and that's just going to be 317 times our 3.17 times a half because it's a triangle, and that's going to give us a value of 502. So we can actually go now and just mark that on our moment diagram, and we can bring that point of interest down to keep things clear, and we can then mark the 502 directly under that 3.17 feet. So we now know that maximum there for where we cross zero, but what we don't know is what, um, how do we get there? Is it a linear slope? Is it uh, a curve from zero to 502? What is that going to look like? So let's go back again and think about what is that decreasing magnitude of the shear mean to us? Well, since the shear is decreasing, then the slope should be decreasing. And what that would look like is a curve that goes up and then gets less steep as we get up to the 502. And if you have a trouble imagining that as less steep or decreasing, just imagine you were walking up that, starting at the left side and walking towards 502. Really steep around zero, but it gets easier and easier as we move along. Uh, so... We've now got our 0 to 3.17 feet. We need to start looking at the next areas because we're just going to start summing areas up as we move along to 15 feet. So what might be easier now is to go ahead and just look at all the areas and get their values so we can move forward quickly. All right, so area 2 we can point out, and that's just going to be that negative triangle. So we'd have negative 183 times 1.83 feet, what's left of the 5 feet, times a half, because it is a triangle, and that's going to give us negative 167. And then we have that lower rectangle, which I'm going to break into two areas, A3 and A4. And the only reason I'm doing that is because we know we're going to have a jump at that applied moment. So I need the area before 10 feet and the area after 10 feet. And that's just negative 183 times 5, or negative 915. All right, so now we can start summing up. So let's sum our next constant area, which would be A2. Let's add that to A1, and that's going to get us over to 5 feet. All right, in this case, it is a negative area, so our M value is going to be decreasing. So we can plot our point, and that's just going to be A1 plus A2, which gives us 335. And the magnitude is increasing. We go from 0 to 183 in magnitude, so we need an increasing slope. It's going to get steeper as we go. Then when we add in A3, that is negative, so it's going to decrease our moment value, but it is constant. The shear is constant. So when we then go ahead and get our um, point at 10 feet, which would just be A1 plus A2 plus A3 equal to negative 580, we're going to have a constant slope, which just means a linear slope. Now we need to add in that applied moment. The moment is going clockwise, which is the direction we defined as positive, so that's going to cause a positive jump. Add that to A1 plus A2 plus A3, and we're going to have 920 and a straight-up jump. And that finally leaves us with our final area to add. And just like area 3, that is a negative 
shear, so it's going to subtract from our moment. It's got a constant slope, so we'll have 920 minus our 915, which leaves us with 5. It's not quite zero, but it's really less than 1% error when you look at that 920 value, so no big deal. And we're going to have a constant slope back down to zero. And so we have now very quickly drawn our shear and moment diagram without having to write equations. So take some time, review this video, practice, and we'll get you drawing shear and moment diagrams by the graphical method.